Very good. Welcome back. Um, I hope you all enjoyed the fireside chat as much as I did. Um, and now we are moving to a, a panel where we're actually, uh, to steal an airplane metaphor, we're getting closer to the runway. I'm not quite sure what altitude we'll see, um, but we want to kind of get into more of the details um, from our, uh, our, our panel of, of speakers. Um, speaking of which, um, I appreciate uh, Ms. Ochko is, is, is uh, joining us virtually. Um, he's under somewhat of a time pressure and I have to leave um, at 12.15. So I will slightly rejig the, the, the panel to make sure that um, he has enough uh, uh, time to, to, to share his, uh, his thoughts on, on this important uh, discussion. Um, what I will do though is uh, first, um, on top of welcoming our esteemed panel, but also briefly uh, introduce them. So starting with uh, uh, Peter Ochko, um, he's the Deputy Minister for Industry and Trade, he's in charge of digitalization and innovation. Uh, he has extensive experience, so a wave, hello, hello. Um, across a wide portfolio of areas, uh, finance, budget, structural funds, and co-driving investments into uh, Czechia. Um, as mentioned earlier and introduced earlier, we have Mrs. Gaffey uh, recently took over the leadership for those who are joining us online um, uh, for this particular panel um, of uh, DIGIT at the European uh, Commission. Um, Maria uh, Dalarga, Dalarga. Uh, by the way, Cufflinks. Pretty good, eh? No. Yeah, no, I know. I'm sorry, Ms. Gaffey, I just, next time I'll get my Irish ones. Anyway, um, welcome. So, um, Maria is a long standing uh, Swedish civil servant uh, Swedish, and the Swedish government, hands on open source experience, Ministry of Employment, and now working at the Agency for Digital uh, Development, uh, the, the DIG. So, the, you, the two of you purposefully sat next door to each other to start collaborating. Actually, that's already happened since yesterday, right? For the first OSPO meeting. So, uh, and then last but not least, um, uh, Mr. Profond again, I've uh, uh, introduced him before, but I think the important thing is he has, he's the advisor to the Minister of Digitalization, Mr. Martos, who spoke um, earlier, uh, is very much in, 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 involved in this uh, digital agency, which has um, uh, recently, recently um, taken off. So I'm going to turn first to, to you, uh, Minister, if I may. Um, I think it's fitting to start with a question about uh, competitiveness, um, given your role in uh, industry and, and trade. Um, how would you assess the understanding and, and adoption across business sectors, across the public sector, um, even political groups, as to open source's enabling role in driving competitiveness? Welcome and thank you. The floor is yours. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, thank you very much and uh, greetings to Bruno. I'm uh, unfortunately unable to, to uh, join you uh, in person as I have to leave and that, uh, that's another thing I I wanted to apologize sooner because I have to go to the parliament for some, some I, it's a lot of things happening now with all the Ukraine and uh, energy crisis. So, uh, so apologies uh, for that. And uh, thank you again for uh, inviting me to this, uh, to this interesting discussion. I, I have to say it's also interesting for me because actually you mentioned some points from my previous career, but actually uh, I started uh, like 25 years ago as a, uh, I actually web developer uh, like coder like uh, like using uh, <laughs> uh, primarily open source uh, open source um, uh, systems uh, and um, uh, actually I, I definitely could uh, uh, could uh, assess and evaluate uh, how how beneficial it was for for our uh, small technological startup at the time. And also thanks to that, the technological startup actually has grown into into big company. It was then bought actually by big, uh, big much bigger company from from another country. I will not name, but uh, but I um, I just wanted to say that uh, I was in business many years ago. Uh, so um, uh, for for us actually, uh, definitely uh, open source is uh, is a um, uh, way how uh, how we can enable uh, enable um, uh, the uh, the co com competitiveness of uh, of regions. Actually, Brno is an example of of um, of such uh, uh, such a region where actually IT and of course, with, uh, for example, Red Hat uh, present there. 
Uh, actually, open source is definitely, uh, definitely one of the driver, driver forces of development of uh, IT related innovation environment in Brno. Uh, more generally, uh, actually, I think uh, uh, on, um, from the level of the government, what we, we should do, and we are doing, uh, so, of course, to some extent, is that we should actually do uh, some awareness raising and support in the area of innovation uh, and. Uh, um, uh, especially in this sense, uh, we speak about uh, innovation in the uh, digital digital uh, sphere, uh, and uh, we focus primarily on SMEs, uh, SMEs and uh, startups. Again, Brno is, uh, is an example of uh, how we can do that uh, well. Um, uh, thanks also to the regional and cities, municipal strategies. On the national level, uh, what we are doing is that we have. Uh, uh, we have actually new smart specialization strategy um, and uh, this uh, the strategy actually speaks about uh, or, or I, I don't know if you are familiar with it, uh, with what, what it uh, is for actually smart specialization strategy actually says uh, where, uh, where uh, the country has uh, uh, innovation potential in, in, in the companies where, where we have um, uh, great research and where are, where are the trends? Where these three things meet, there should be a priority to focus on. And uh, actually, in this new smart specialization strategy, we have a lot of um, a lot of um, domains related to uh, to IT, to the development of <clears throat> of applications to digital economy generally, and um, and also open source is uh, is uh, one. Of the priorities. Uh, how does it work? This uh, this uh, uh, this smart specialization strategy uh, is uh, not just a strategy that will remain in uh, uh, on the table or uh, wherever uh, on uh, uh, on our ministry. Uh, it's really being implemented, and uh, actually, um, all the innovation mechanisms that are implemented on the national or regional level should somehow follow this strategy. So. So um, I think uh, in the end, it's, it's, a, it's a really great support because actually, for example, um, all the support in the area of innovation uh, finance from the cohesion policy is driven by the smart specialization strategy, but also many, many of the national, national, uh, national schemes. Uh, so um, we need to, uh, to actually maybe, maybe to do more awareness raising, but actually the general strategy is there. Uh, and uh, the awareness raising actually I think uh, uh, can be down to some mechanisms that we have in place and um, uh, um, I think uh, for example Brno again if you are in Brno uh, is example of um, uh, of activities that now can be actually uh, um, actually um, uh, they define under the heading of so-called digital innovation hubs. Digital innovation hubs are actually uh, institutes uh, that were actually created under the Digital Europe program and should, uh, should work as a network of inst institutions or consortia, uh, private, uh, regional, or uh, or maybe even research institutions that uh, are focusing on um, on uh, support uh, of um, SMEs, especially SMEs, not only SMEs, but especially SMEs uh, in digital transformation. So I, I see see a lot, a lot of potential in this network and uh, in Brno or in Kuzin, uh, just next to uh, Brno, uh, is, is, uh, is, an, is an example of such a, uh, such, uh, such a digital innovation hub. Um, and it's um, a company that is actually um, daughter company of uh, South Monument Innovation Center, it's called Intemac, and they have a great project that is called Digimat, Digimat uh, uh, that, uh, that supports uh, SMEs, including startups in digital transformation. So I think open source um, um, solutions have, uh, have a few ways how to, uh, how to be actually, um, uh, actually <clears throat> Uh, distributed and uh, uh, and um, the, the ideas of open source can be can be communicated through several several channels, including these digital innovation hubs. And maybe we should use that, uh, these channels more than we 
bit up to now, and that might be maybe some of the one of the results of, of our panel. So that's that's uh, uh, the answer for the first question. Very good, thank you. Um, I think one of my takeaways from that is OS, uh, open source is a great is great for economic uh, development in the region. Of course, Bruno, as you said, is a, is a great example of that uh, in Czechia, but also, frankly, around the world. Um, you mentioned the Digital Europe program, so I see quite a nice uh, um, link bridge over to Ms. Scaffi, who mentioned it uh, earlier in her keynote um, around uh, a couple of projects which are being funded by that, one of which is the Leos editor. Um, and also, um, uh, you went online at the time, but uh, there was also a, um, a, a launch, um, which I, again, we, we, we particularly appreciated the launch taking place in, in, in Brno and Czechia uh, of the EU's code.europe.eu. So I'd like to ask uh, Mrs. Scaffi a sort of follow on question on the theme of investment um, uh, in terms of you know, the status of, of Europe's or rather either EU as an institution's embrace of open source and perhaps shedding some more light on those, those kinds of recent investments which you've seen in in the actually already just just six months of your of your uh, arrival at uh, the uh, with the head of digital thank you i'll give you the, the microphone thank you thank you very much james um, yeah i mean the, the commission's commitment to open source i think is getting stronger and stronger as time goes on and i think um we were talking at the coffee break it is very much an incremental process when you look back and see that it's um the, all this work started 20 years ago and we move forward step by step and what the commission is trying to do is build its own capacity as regards open source inside the house and across the most important dgs and then also to identify the funding sources that are available from the Euro european funds that can be accessed by um, uh, developers can be accessed for interesting individual projects and then we have to see how can we draw from what is good and share what works well across um, the whole of Europe? So I mentioned earlier on the next generation internet funding. So that seems to be very successful in reaching open source projects. And um, it's helping to fund open source developers who are working on the edge of innovation. And sometimes some of our European funding sources are not so good at supporting innovation. So I think this is good, maybe some of our big uh, traditional funding programs like um, structured funds have not been so good at that in the past. I was interested to, to hear about the recovery and resilience fund challenges this morning and uh, I was particularly interested because I spent 15 years of my career in um, in the commission working on, on regional policy. So I, it seems to me that it is the more innovative uh, smaller kind of initiatives that are the ones that are going to support um, open source projects the better. So, um, yeah, another area we're involved in in digit is bug bounties and hackathons. Um, and these came out of a pilot project and preparatory action by the European Parliament. And um, we heard the FOSSEPS project mentioned in, uh, in this morning as well by myself. And they have asked me to tell, tell you what the, um, what the acronym stands for, because even though I told me about uh, 10 minutes ago, I forgot it already. But these pilot projects um, are helping us, to, helping to challenge the Commission for innovation, because we're not the most innovative organisation, but we are finding ways to support innovation through these kind of um, projects. We're doing hackathons with the United Nations as well, but we need to think about not just about how we fund hackers, but how we find ways to fund the developers in the first place. So co-creation sounds good, but it's not, uh, it's not easy. And I don't think we should pretend that it is easy, but we, 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 we are trying hard. Uh, so we have to work with our peers, exchange experiences and learn from our mistakes. But maybe not only learn from our mistakes, more importantly, learn from our successes and share our successes. But I think there are a, quite a number of opportunities um, for funding, for open source, and the Commission is certainly committed to making sure that those are exploited. Thanks. Great. One such example, if you look up in the corner, there's this European flag, it's the Czech Cyber Crime Center of Excellence, um, paid for by one of those funds. So. Um, more to come. Um, so 
Minister, I appreciate you have a few more minutes with us. I would like to um, go back to you, if I may, um, and talk a little bit more about what you were um, elaborating around competitiveness, but this time in the case of, of, of real jobs. And of course, uh, what's front and centre at the moment um, in terms of uh, the challenges that we're, uh, the headwinds that we're all, we're all facing. Um, the question here is about uh, Czechia's impressive uh, record when it comes to IT talent. Um, that skills uh, development in, in, in universities like this, but others uh, across the country. Um, and a little bit what Ambassador Daddy was saying about the importance of also doing likewise at an educational, at, at, a, at, a, at, a, at a school level. Um, but the question is really about you know, this, this, this leadership you see here in Bruno um, and, and how do you see that sort of evolving, um, uh, not only in, in Czechia, but also given your current presidency uh, beyond. Uh, in, across across Europe, um, in terms of, of of building out more jobs in in open source, um, and, and and thereby helping further uh, the competitiveness. And one one data point which I think Marcel mentioned was the EU's uh, report on open source, which talks about uh, for every ten percent increase in contribution upstream, you get a 06 percent GDP points uplift. So that's a pretty significant uh, uh, link. Um, so I'm really interested to hear more from you on that. Thank you. Yeah, uh, so thanks, and uh, yeah, I'm happy that you, you asked us to check uh, Brno ecosystem as, uh, as a nice example for how the UI I think it is really so. Uh, the answer is that uh, actually there is no, uh, no short way to achieve uh, the success uh, in Brno and the South Moravian region shows that, uh, that you have to be actually uh, very focused and consequent in your steps for many years uh, to achieve uh, this, this level of um, uh, excellent uh, innovation uh, in ecosystem that uh, actually Brno and the surroundings uh, uh, actually is now. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure about exactly, but I think it was like uh, 2000 or 2001 when actually the new innovation strategy in Brno was actually uh, approved. Uh, and the important fact was uh, that uh, it was uh, not so much changed by the new political representations uh, every four or even last year. So, so this is uh, this is uh, really important to have a strategy, a, a clear vision, and not to not to change it every few. Uh, change it every few years, and, um, and uh, I think uh, uh, it's uh, it's clear success uh, success now. And uh, no politicians in the South Moravian region, I think, would uh, would change change the, uh, the innovative nature of uh, uh, of the uh, of, uh, of the city and, um, and the region itself. So um, uh, it's uh, one thing, but the second thing is that we need to speak about education, and of course. Uh, changing the, the educational system is not easy. Um, I think what, what works uh, in Brno, but also in Prague and a few other parts of the Czech Republic is, is uh, definitely um, some sort of partnerships uh, between, uh, between uh, private sector, uh, academia and the uh, public sector. Again, taking example from Brno, uh, we can speak about uh, actually newly established, but based on our previous cooperation, Cybersecurity Innovation Hub, that is actually a partnership of universities, uh, public bodies, clusters, uh, and um, no, definitely this hub uh, also uh, helps to uh, to actually uh, um, uh, increasing the the importance of uh, of education also in open source um, uh, in, in, in the region. We need uh, more of these partnerships. Actually, I, I, I have uh, uh, be a, a, a bit self-critical. Uh, uh, the educational system, uh, uh, I think, on the level of universities, it works very well. But uh, the elementary and high schools, it's, uh, it's more difficult. And uh, uh, if the region uh, is active and, uh, and, uh, and supports the, 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 the transformation in, on the level of high schools, uh, it works well, but uh, we have a lot of regions where it is not so much, and uh, it doesn't it doesn't uh, work uh, work uh, uh, in that way as, as in the uh, region. So uh, we need uh, more more focused uh, 
national strategy to to actually um, actually um, produce more IT talents uh, and uh, of course uh, also IT talents that are aware of the uh, of the benefits of uh, uh, open source. So. Uh, this is difficult, of course, the, the re regional or the elementary and the high school education is not something that is, uh, uh, of course, uh, too much harmonized on, uh, on the EU level. So um, uh, what we can do is to actually support, uh, support increasing, um, uh, increasing uh, the best practice in change, uh, supporting the, the, the partnerships supporting the, uh, the the network of digital innovation hubs that uh, also can work with the schools. Uh, this is, I think, really, really important. And because I will have to leave, I just say a few words that are not so much uh, or not directly linked to, uh, to, to the jobs question, but are linked to the, to the presidency of the EU that we have now. I just wanted to say in more general terms that uh, actually, um, I know that this is not, uh, not to, to, uh, directly speaking of open source, but what is uh, uh, what is uh, uh, really high priority of the Czech presidency is, uh, is to push the digital legislative files that are on the table. Uh, that of course can uh, can actually help to uh, to develop new solutions, uh, new new applications that can uh, help to increase in competitiveness and and, uh, and uh, um, uh, improve the lives of the citizens. Uh, we have AI Act, uh, we have uh, Data Act, and um, uh, now, uh, also thanks to the French presidency, we have already approved a Data Governance Act, and uh, this is uh, this is something that I think we should take care about quick implementation because uh, Data Governance Act brings a lot of um, a lot of measures how, how to actually facilitate. The reuse of uh, of data from uh, public sector and um, how to uh, how to generate new data intermediaries and uh, of course data the data are blood for any applications uh, uh, for for the data economy so uh, this this is I also wanted to mention I, I know that this is not directly to the point of open source but I think speaking about open data is also really important and uh, data governance as well as data to some extent can really help to, to increase the, uh, the sharing of data in the EU. Thank you. Great. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Thank you. I think on that point uh, on skills, uh, everybody in this room, everybody online um, absolutely stands ready to, to help um, um, develop and uh, involve those kinds of partnerships. Uh, on the presidency front, uh, point taken, a lot of lot of legislation uh, which has been adopted. Uh, Marcel talked about the DMA earlier, but, but also there's a there's a there's a raft of legislation coming through, uh, and a lot of it um, potentially very positive for for open source. Yesterday was the Cyber Resilience Act, uh, which has been launched uh, with an exemption for for open source. So I think um, again the default to open approaches is, is, is there and it's good, good to see and uh, more of that to come. I appreciate you, you need to, to drop now. So I get like to thank you for your time and your participation and uh, look forward to working with you on behalf of everyone in the, the next few months, your presidency, but also after that. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, it was a real pleasure and uh, I have to apologize really uh, and uh, I wish you good luck to, to your panel. Thank you, goodbye. Thank you. So um, I'd like to go turn to Maria, if I may. Um, talked about uh, you know, this, this whole essence of sharing and reusing um, and uh, the, the importance of helping one another at a country level or at a company level, at a civil society level. The, 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 I mean, Sweden is, is well regarded in, in, in terms of its um, digital uh, slash open source credentials. Yes, there's, there's more, to, more to do as, as often is the case, um, but it'd be interesting to hear a bit more about uh, what you see and what you saw as, as key drivers in Sweden's success. Um, and then um, a little bit sort of forward looking in terms of your own digital agency and, and uh, projects which you have um, underway. Thank you. Um, first, um I would like to elaborate a bit on uh, as open as possible and as closed as necessary, because we're talking about uh, open by default. 
um, which is a very um, important principle. Uh, my uh, authority, um, Agency for Digital Government, DIG, um, we have a policy, an open source policy, which is saying everything we procure should be open standards and open source. And everything we develop should be licensed with an open source license. And this is also uh, accordingly to the Tallinn um, Declaration 2017. So this is nothing new. This is something we already know. But still, it's difficult for the public sector to reach to that level. And we are re working really hard on that. And what we see is that it's rather difficult when it comes to procurement and the procurement departments. How do they work with open source? Because you don't have to procure open source. It's just to download, try out, and use. So, so that, that is rather good. Um, also on the same topic, um, we have a very old law in Sweden. Uh, it's from 1766. It's a public access to government information. So transparency is very important for us. But more important is actually the dialogue. So what we have, which I'm very proud of, it's an open forum, it's a community forum um, on our da national data portal where people can, anybody, citizens, companies, um, academia, Anybody can ask questions uh, or discuss topics about our digital commons, the APIs, um, open source. Um, some people would like to start working on a project together. And, and they do it. I even have the app on my phone. So every day, a couple of messages is coming in, people asking for contributions, and we are helping each other out. So far, we have 60,000 visitors. And we have over 2,000 topics. And this is, I think, a key success factor that we start communicating, we start to talk, we try to be as transparent as possible. But everything is not to be transparent. The other side is as close as necessary. And we too need to work on that. Um, some information and some systems are critical functions of our society. Some information is the information about our citizens. So even if you would like to use the cloud to scale up and scale down, it's sometimes difficult due to GDPR and also due to that it's not suitable. So we are collaborating again, uh, a couple of author authorities so the Swedish Social Security Agency, they are hosting um, the IT operations of some of the Swedish authorities. And success story for this is also, of course, well, open source, using an open source infrastructure to make it possible for digital sovereignty. And this has been ongoing since 2017, like a trial, but now we are seeing great results. So our government has a proposal that my agency will start to look at the next step to make this a more permanent solution. So stay tuned. Thank you very much. Uh, we will stay tuned. Um, I think this is a uh, you know, huge opportunity, um, not only for Sweden, but also, also for other member states to, to study and, and emulate in, in the open source way. When I say, when I said uh, di uh, Sweden was digitally advanced, I now realize it started off in 1766. I mean, you know, look no further. <laughs> Good. Well, Mr. Profond, if I may bring you into the, uh, the discussion. So we've talked a little bit about um, your, your, um, your um, uh, role within uh, the new uh, digital um, agency. I, I, Appreciate again in the, in the aeroplane metaphor, getting a bit more details about some of the achievements, some of your plans, some of the challenges in terms of accelerating this 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 effort. Um, and of course, um, um, it would be interesting to hear, you know, um, how you see the the, the Swedes uh, as a, as a, as an agency uh, as an inspiration, but uh, but others which um, are particularly um, noteworthy. Thank you. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> so. I have to describe the uh, the Czech organization of digitalization. 
the government has uh, uh, the government has a new position of vice prime minister for digitalization. It's new in this government. That the government is said about a little more than half a year. Uh, uh, we are in the process of founding the central authority for a government level called Digital Information and Agency, India. Yeah. Now the government is led, uh, now the e government is led by Ministry of Interior, as I uh, speak. Ele Ele the digitalization of business is supported by Ministry of Trade by Mr. Ochko. Uh, uh, we have uh, very robust laws and regulations. For example, we were one of the first states uh, with law about clouds in the public sector. Of course, this approach can be very bureaucratic and inflexible. <clears throat> Our central shared information system, like basics registry, data exchange, and so are good on paper, but very old, and even the hardware is old. And it's because of the organization, because it's not priority of current Ministry of Interior. And that's one uh, thing uh, that we are changing and uh, 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 and uh, bringing a more stable budget in this area and uh, more expertise. Because one of the problems why there is uh, no update, for example, of hardware, which is easy, you just buy hardware, it's not some rocket science, uh, is um, that there are no experts. So a lot of procurement are bad and criticized and uh, canceled and things like that. The rest of the government is decentralized. Every institution is procure its own software and hardware. Only thing is that there are some central enterprise architecture. So to the goals, our goals are until the end of this year, found the digital inform and information agency, change the procurement law to be to be to be more flexible. We are solving the issue of horizontal cooperation be between the state department. Like if you want uh, if you want to uh, buy something from another ministry, you need to do a procurement in Czech law. And uh, that is absurd because you are one state, one institution uh, in the end of the day. So of course you can do some internal uh, internal things. So we are ch uh, changing the procurement law in this way uh, to be more flexible. And the last uh, goal for this year uh, is our own budget chapter in national, national chapter for the next year. So uh, on the national level, you will see uh, the budget for this institution. That's that's uh, now not transparent because you see uh, the budget of Ministry of Interior and the digitalization is so small that there are in a, some some item like rest. It's absurd. Uh, and our plan for the next year, so, uh, set up proper modern working culture in our agency. That's important because we need a uh, young talent. We need uh, we need to be flexible, and for this we need a proper modern working culture. And this is not uh, common in uh, our other public institution to have some good working culture, home office, sick days, and uh, and and things like that. Uh, the next goal is to set up collaboration between the R and other institution. This is crucial. We we building central authority, and we need to collaborate with another institution. So, so proper collaboration uh, is uh, is key. Uh, of, uh, of course, cooperation with the Czech. A newly found OSPO, 
to from out of the open source to um, and uh, without the agency OSPO, uh, the Czech OSPO will be only NGO without the partner in the public sector. Uh, next goal is build our nation cloud. Uh, uh, another goal is stabilize the situation about central shared software. As I mentioned, there are all there are uh, ah, there are all and it it's uh, items for a museum, I think. <laughs> so we need to prepare some project to renew this software, and I hope in some modern uh, modern way. Uh, in a, yeah, we we can use ag agile approach. We, we can uh, use open source, and so. And uh, the last but not least, prepare preparing to the EU wallet from EID. Uh, there is a lot of th things that the uh, member state has to prepare. For example, the data sources. Uh, the the wallet itself it will it, it will be some technical specification, uh, not so complex. But the data source can be a little tricky. For example, in Czech Republic, we have no information about. Uh, about uh, students on universities or in as the government the universities are independent and they have students of course we financing them but only uh, there is financing only per capita it's not uh, it's not uh, it's not good for uh, some recognition of uh, status of student or uh, to to describe uh, uh the expertise or something like this and uh, we have to manage to co collaborate with our universities for example and, and other data sources to prepare the, the european world so this is our plan and uh, fantastic thank you I, I guess you're not alone in terms of trying to update uh, procurement law um i think that's there's there's a lot of will to do that and I think what I see in some some member states, there are inadvertent uh, outcomes which are unexpected. Uh, so, for example, if you're looking at an idea from that, from 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 thin air, if you're selling services, many of the procurement models are engineered for proprietary services, um, and therefore with different liability caps, and that really makes things life difficult for open source. Yeah, uh, this is one of the biggest uh, problem in, uh, in the current IP, uh, of course, the procurement law and so the budgeting law, uh, CAPEX versus OPEX. Uh, it's a big problem in transition to cloud. And uh, on this topic, we need a collaboration of Ministry of Finance. So uh, it's not so easy because, of course, it's rigid and their, uh, their rules are good. At good without the comment and we cannot uh, change them because they are the best <laughs> so this will be another challenge for us great thank you you mentioned the you know, after capex opex and and uh, and that, that makes me think of uh, uh, someone else on the panel i will I'll come to in a second but also you mentioned about proper and working cultures um and, and this is something which again uh European Commission, in particular, Digit has been doing for a long time in terms of acting as a kind of spoke in the in the sorry in the hub in the in the in the wheel um, uh, of member states. So, it'd be interesting, uh, Ms. Gaffey, if I can hand over to you about um, the, your your now vision uh, going forward around uh, Digit sort of enabling a meaning role um, when it comes to kind of further developing that default open uh, posture. Thanks. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I mentioned earlier all the various funding sources that there are for open source. Um, and I think there never will be uh, a fund focusing on open source by itself. So I think, um, but then the open source community is a very agile, flexible community. So I think they need to be 
creative in finding their way through um, the European Union funding sources. And uh, I think we at Digit are happy to help them. But what we are going to, our next initiative we are going to take is to see how can we bring the community of uh, open source uh, together. And we think we can help to do this through our Interoperability Europe Act, which we hope we will be able to publish our proposal uh, before the end of the year in time for the Czech presidency to initiate discussions with uh, with with council and and parliament um, so this is a regulation that is has been prepared by the commission in close collaboration uh, with the member states it's it's based on a on a decades long cooperation between member states but the vision is that we have to find a mechanism where we can pull together uh, the good practices and the learning that ha has been generated among public administrations at local, national and European level. And we think this will help um, to validate, give value to the work that is done on open source and will help identify the really good examples. And we, we mentioned as well the code.europa.eu this morning. That will be a repository for many of these examples. But um, basically, we see it uh, working uh, across all member states, across cultural borders, and transcending uh, different sectors. So basically, we want to create a culture of open cooperation and transparency. Um, and that for us will be the future interoperability policy for Europe. And it's quite interesting in the discussions we've had within the Commission. Some people across the Commission have said, Oh, what are you doing? What are you trying to do? And oh and we will propose a regulation, but if we are not we are not making it a requirement for every member state to participate. Member states will participate at the level they wish to and to the extent they want to. But it's member states asked us for a regulation. Uh, so um, it's just it's just interesting how some people in the more traditional parts of the commission found it hard to understand how we wanted to go about this. And I suppose in the end, as everything in this area, it's been an incremental process over uh, tw 20 years. So um, we'll make our proposal. We will have a discussion with member states, with parliament. And then, of course, we have to implement it. And it's only as we implement it that we will really see what needs to be improved and how we can work better. So that's that's our ambitious ambition. Thank you. Super. Thank you very much. Uh, just listening to you talk about culture of open collaboration, in one of the uh, resources uh, which uh, I use very often is uh, the Commission's uh, OSOC open source observatory. Um, and um, back in Sweden, um, Maria's, if I'm mistaken, uh, driving a, a similar uh, uh, repository or similar uh, collaboration platform. Um, I think it's no sad as in not, not, not happy, but no sad dot uh, punct essay. And, uh, and, and for example, uh, the next, I'm just looking at the website actually, the next uh, session of dealing on business models, open source business models, uh, on the 8th of November, bringing in all sorts of different uh, players to talk this through. So I think that more of that is needed, uh, both at the EU level and member state level, um, to kind of clarify and, and, uh, and, and illustrate uh, what, the, what the state of the art is. Um, actually, on that front, I'm conscious uh, we're running out of time. So, so in fact, Maria, I'm going to ask you the final question, and then I'll leave um, the, the fellow panelists to, to provide a, a closing statement. Um, so if you'd like them to elaborate more on um, on, on those ad and those kinds of collaborative tools. Uh, um, but also, of course, as we mentioned before, um, the Deputy Minister was mentioning the Czech Presidency, of course, it's Sweden's turn next. If there's anything you want to uh, share with us um, in advance, that would be great. Uh, in particular, that sort of focus and potential option, I appreciate recent election, um, dot, dot, dot. But um, it open source is uh, enablement, I assume, would continue as a, as a, as a, as a theme. Um, and it's to be seen how, how, how much of a priority status that received. So, Maria? Yes, thank you. Um, 
this will, of course, continue with open source and the great work that we are uh, achieving now and here. And just being here for two days and taking, uh, being part of all interesting discussing, uh, discussions, seeing all great um, opportunities that are out there. Um, I have a colleague of mine, he always say, the first day of starting to share is actually today. And I think that this is something we should do. So the first thing I would do is to share my contacts with you so we can start collaborating on, for instance, cybersecurity, because that is something very important. And another thing I will do is I will try to summarize this event. I will put it on the Swedish um, community forum so everyone else can uh, also be part of what we have been discussing today. So these are the two things that I would like to do. Um, then I would like, I know it's uh, not so much time, but I will just try um, to say one more thing. We have a saying in Swedish, Schöp inte grisen i säcken. And since you know some Swedish, maybe we would like to translate. <laughs> okay, and um, that's do not buy the pig in the sack. Um, before I was talking about uh, a law from 1766, so this, this goes back to the medievals. Before we knew that when we are doing procurements, we need to check what we actually are buying. Um, and I think that is something we can work more on and also cross border. So I would like to do more cross border coding um, so let's put out our code, let's package it in a way that we can actually collaborate cross-border. Sweden, Czech Republic, that is what I would like to do. Yeah, I, I'm very happy that we can collaborate and we will do and with the open cities, of course, uh, because I think we have a lot of common and in, uh, we challenge the same problem in uh, the organization of state and in uh, the mitigation of uh, vendor opt-in. Yeah, so. So I think, I think that's, a, that's a, we've got three minutes on the clock. Yep, thank you. So I, I think that's a, that's a fairly um, uh, open, I think, challenge, um, uh, invitation perhaps that we explore how to take this event, um, step it up in the, the next presidency. And of course, in the meantime, there'll be a huge amount of collaboration through the EU's um, OSPO and, and, other, and, other, and other fora. So I think that's a really exciting um, opportunity for us all um, to continue to, to scale this conversation. So with three minutes to go, I'm just going to hand back the microphone in that direction, just to have a sort of final statement and we close out the panel. Thank you. Uh, keep collaborating, keep having the dialogue. I think that's the most important thing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, I have no words now. <laughs> but I think uh, the important thing is a strong community and to continue dialogue between all the stakeholders. Thank you. Uh, I think it should be clear from what I've said already today that the Commission recognizes the global strategic and practical value of free and open source. We're committed to advance on establishing a working culture based on the principles of uh, open source. And we look forward to the uh, increased pace of work with our peers in the member states, with the open IT service providers and with open source software developers, because I think we've got huge potential that we can unleash if we get this right. Thanks.